Good afternoon, everybody, and Happy New Year. This is Chick Hearn with Mel Allen. Happy New Year, everybody. Speaking to you from the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California, for the Gillette Safety Razor Company. And we're all set to bring you the 1958 Rose Bowl game between the Ohio State Buckeyes and the University of Oregon Ducks. The Gillette Cavalcade of Sports telecasts the major sports events all around the year. Classics like today's Rose Bowl game, the Kentucky Derby, All-Star Baseball Game, World Series, Blue and Gray Football Game, and the feature boxing match of the week every Friday night. This is our thank you to the men and the women who buy Gillette products. Well, ladies and gentlemen, in perfect football weather, 75 degrees here in sunny Southern California, Pasadena, California, we're all set for the 44th annual Tournament of Roses football game. Woody Hayes has brought the pride of the Big Ten or the Western Conference, Ohio State, here to Pasadena to battle Len Casanova's Oregon Ducks. The weather, perfect. A crowd, 100,000 strong. The record here is 100,963 established in 1950. And today, the most that they could handle, they tell us, is 1,000, 100,808. We are located high above the western rim of the Rose Bowl Stadium in Pasadena. You're looking down and around a stadium that runs, so far as the football field is concerned, in a north and south direction. That is the University of Oregon marching band. The University of Oregon coming here, and proud they are for their third appearance in the Rose Bowl. They have an enrollment of 7,000 students located at Eugene, Oregon, which is located at the head of beautiful Willamette Valley, 124 miles south of Portland. The Oregon team is called the Ducks, or the Webfoots. They're coached by Len Casanova. Len has just completed seven years of coaching. He was pit finished, picked to finish this year, seventh or eighth in the Pacific Coast Conference, but as you well know, he came up with a tremendous season and tied with Oregon State for the Pacific Coast Conference title. Oregon students have deep appreciation for Coach Len Casanova. In 1954, they presented him with a plaque which read, and I quote, having given us victory by reestablishing an undying Oregon spirit, you have won the respect and admiration of your team and the entire Oregon family. Overall this year, the University of Oregon Ducks had a record of seven wins and three defeats. Defeated by Pittsburgh 6-3 on a pass play in the last 20 seconds. They lost to Washington 13-6, and Oregon State edged them in the season finale 10-7 to earn the Pacific Coast Conference tie. In victories, Oregon defeated Idaho 9-6, beat UCLA 21-0, shut out San Jose State 26-0, edged Washington State 14-13, beat California 24-6 edged Stanford 27 to 26 and defeated Southern California 16 to 7. In the 10 ball games this year for the University of Oregon, they averaged 15 points per game offensively. They allowed the opponent just eight and a half points per game. Now the Ohio State Buckeyes and proud they are from Columbus, Ohio. This great institution was opened in 1873 with just 17 students. Today, the Buckeye School boasts an enrollment of 22,400 students. And Coach Woody Hayes, like Casanova, has completed his seventh year at Columbus. In those seven years, Woody's teams have won 47, lost 15, and tied two. Now, Woody Hayes' record in the Big Ten has been fantastic. His Buckeyes have won the undisputed Big Ten championships in three of the last four years. In fact, Ohio State has won, get this ladies and gentlemen, Ohio State has won 24 of its last 26 conference games. Included in this was a string of 17 straight conference wins, and that's an all-time Big Ten record. Now, Woody Hayes' 1954 team was acclaimed national champions, and the team that you'll see here today was rated as the top collegiate team in the country by two of the national press associations. On the field now, you see the University of Ohio State marching band joining forces with the University of Oregon marching band. And ladies and gentlemen, we direct your attention to the field for the playing of our national anthem. The bands of the University of Oregon and Ohio State University, under the direction of Ira D. Lee, will now play our national anthem.
On the field, you see the combined bands of Ohio State University and the University of Oregon. Let's get back and talk a little bit more about the Western Conference champion, Ohio State Buckeyes. This year, their record was 8-1 and one in the opening game of the year, defeated by TCU 18-14. to 14. But after that, it was a clean sweep on the season. Ohio State 35, Washington 7, Ohio State 21, Illinois 7, Ohio State 56, Indiana nothing, Ohio State 16, Wisconsin 13, Ohio State 47, Northwestern 6, Ohio State 20, Purdue 7, Ohio State in the big game of the year, 17, Iowa 13, and Ohio State 31, Michigan 14. Offensively, Ohio State a potent force. They averaged 28 points a game this year. And also this year, the opponents of Ohio State were held to less than 10 points per game. In 1921, Ohio State was here to the Rose Bowl, losing to California 28 to nothing. In 1950, they beat California 17 to 14. In 1955, they beat SC 20 to 7. And who knows what will happen here on this first day of January 1958. Here are your starting lineups, ladies and gentlemen. For Ohio State, left end, number 84, Jim Houston, 6'2", 216-pound sophomore from Massillon, Ohio. At left tackle, number 71, Dick Shafrath, 6'2", 208-pound, 20-year-old junior from Worcester, Ohio. At left guard, number 65, Bill Jobko, 6'1", 215, a 22-year-old senior from Lansing, Ohio. These are the Oregon Ducks. They're wearing white jerseys. Yellow golden headgear, yellow golden trousers, and green stockings. At center for Ohio State, number 58, Dan Frank, 5'11", 189, a 21-year-old junior from Dover, Ohio. At right guard, number 64, All-American Aurelius Thomas, 6'1", 204, 22-year-old senior from Columbus. At right tackle, number 76, Jim Marshall, 6'3", 215, a 19-year-old sophomore from Columbus. And at right end, number 85, Leo Brown, 5'10", 165, a 23-year-old senior from Portsmouth, Ohio. At quarterback, it'll be number 22, Frank Kremblis, 6'1", 193, a 20-year-old junior from Akron, Ohio. At left halfback, Dick LeBeau, number 44, 6'181", a 20-year-old junior from London, Ohio. At right halfback, number 16, Joe Canavino, 5'11", 172, a 23-year-old senior from Cleveland. And at fullback, number 36, Galen Cisco, 5'11", 203, 21-year-old senior from St. Mary's, Ohio. For the University of Oregon Ducks, at whom you are looking now, at left end, number 80, J.C. Wheeler, 6'2", 193-pound senior from Oregon City. At left tackle, number 72, Jerry Kirshner, 6'4", 218, a 21-year-old senior from Tacoma, Washington. At left guard, number 65, Harry Mundell, 5'6", 198, a 26-year-old senior from Eugene. At center, number 52, Bob Peterson, 6 feet, 194, 20-year-old sophomore from Coos Bay. At right guard, number 62, Bob Gratkow, number 6, rather 6'4", 202, a 20-year-old junior from Oakland, California. At right tackle for the Oregon Ducks, number 71, Jim Linden, 6'4", 221, a 20-year-old junior from Everett, Washington. And at right end, number 83, Ron Stover, he is 6'3", 197, a 20-year-old junior from Vallejo, California. In the backfield for Oregon will be number 17, a quarterback, Jack Crabtree from Lakewood, California. At left halfback, number 25, Charlie Tourville from Martinez, California. At right halfback, number 30, Jim Shanley from North Bend, Oregon. And at the fullback position, number 40, Jack Morris from Medford, Oregon. And now, ladies and gentlemen, with the lineup squared away, it's my good fortune and pleasure to be in the same broadcasting booth and to turn the microphone over now to a fellow whose voice has become synonymous with this great Rose Bowl classic from Pasadena, California, Mel Allen. Hello there, everybody. In a few minutes now, the referee's whistle will sound and the Rose Bowl game will get underway. For me? For you. Thanks. Hot. Beastly. I'm grateful, and you are so brave. But that beard, I still can't take that. She means a decent shave, old man. So make with the Gillette. Look sharp, feel sharp, stay sharp. What a razor. Gillette super speed in every season. It's a friend indeed. Light, regular, heavy. Oh, only way to get a decent shave. 
Discover how easy it is for you to get refreshing, comfortable shaves. Make a safari to a nearby store and pick up a Gillette Super Speed Razor that fits your skin and beard exactly. Light has the precise edge exposure angle and weight for lighter beards, regular for average beards, heavy for dense beards. Change blades so. One dollar for Gillette Super Speed Razor, Gillette Blue Blade Dispenser, and Travel Case. And now we take you down to the center of the field for the referee, Tony Scober, the toss of the coin and the introduction of the captains. Hello, captains. Hello, Captain Brown, Tony Scober. Hello, Captain Brown. Hey, Captain Jesco. How about you? Stanley, Silver, Morris. How are you, Mr. Mandel? How are you, Mr. Mandel? Mr. Chapman, who will do the calling of the guard. All right, Mr. Chapman, I understand that Ohio State is a visiting team, and they will call the toss in the air. Before I do that, I would like to have you meet the other officials of the game. At my left here is Ledbetter, um, uh, headlinesman. And next to in line is back judge Fitzpatrick. And field judge Farrell and umpire Fisher. Uh, I understand you will do the toss calling in the air. Brown, will you call the toss? Heads is called. And it is heads. You have won the toss. Receive Ohio State. And you will defend, defend that goal, and you'll be kicking this way. OK, gentlemen, just one thing I want to mention, that only the acting captain on the field will call timeout of the nearest official. And then after five timeouts, it'll be the captain of the referee, which I would be with the white cap. Are there any questions? Okay, boys, let's have a nice, clean ball game. Shake hands. And so we're set to go with the 44th Rose Bowl game. Oregon will kick off, and along the line, you'll find Ron Stober, Jim Shanley, Jerry Kirshner, Harry Mundell, Bob Peterson, Jack Morris, who will kick off, Jack Crabtree, Bob Gutkow, Jim Linden, Charlie Turbel, and J.C. Wheeler. You see the Ohio State team. And its sideline huddled with Woody Hayes, Len Casanova coaching Oregon, and Ohio State in its receiving deployment will have up front Dick Shafrath, Bill Jobko, Dan Pronk, Aurelius Thomas, Jim Marshall. Behind them, the two ends, Jim Houston and Leo Brown. Bob White at fullback. We'll double check, see if he's going to start. He is. With Joe Canavino, Frank Tremblis, and Don LeBeau, the deep man. Dick LeBeau. The Oregon team getting ready to kick off to Ohio State. Jack Morris will boot it. The deep men for Ohio State on the near side is number 16, Joe Canavino. In the middle is Frank Tremblis, 22. To the far side is Dick LeBeau, number 44. And you see Jack Morris one of the co-captains for the University of Oregon from Eugene, who will boot it off to Ohio State. A beautiful day in sunny Pasadena. Here we go. It's going down to the three-yard line taken by Dick LeBeau. He's to the 15, up to the 20, and down at about the 22 by Bob Peterson, the center for Oregon. Co-captain Norm Chapman, the regular center, was hurt earlier in the year. And so it is Ohio State's ball, first and 10, on its own 21. And we'll watch Woody Hayes' split tee attack. Operating from either a balanced or an unbalanced line. The left end splits out. That's Jim Houston. Bob White, the fullback. Tracking across the 25, about the 26 or 7. With Jim Houston, number 84, the end, leading him. And Bob Peterson, the left linebacker, number 52, making the stop. The ball's on the 27-yard line, a gain of six, second and four for Ohio State. That play was run against a six-man line. 
And this time, Bob White again on the drive or belly series, taking the ball after a fake to the right halfback, Joe Canavino, stopped by Jim Linden, number 71, the right tackle, Harry Mundell, number 65, and Jerry Kirshner, number 72, the left tackle. Moving the ball to the 29-yard line, a gain of two. It's third and two for Ohio State. Frank Kremblis, junior quarterback, number 22, directing the team. And against a tight defense, once again, the fullback, Bob White, the sophomore who sensationally performed against Iowa, moved across the 30 to about the 31, stopped by Harry Mundell and Jim Linden for the University of Oregon, and it's a first down for Ohio State. First and 10 for the Buckeyes. Bob White carrying that ball, and the hole was opened for him by Dan Franck, number 58, the center, and Bill Jobko, 65, the left guard. Opening moments of the 44th Rose Bowl game. First and 10 for Ohio State on its own 31. The left halfback on the ride series, Dick LeBeau, vaulting forward to about the 34-yard line with Ron Stover, the left end for Oregon, number 83, making the tackle, and one of the web foots is shaken up on the play, and a timeout is being taken. And now there's timeout for Oregon, the score. Oregon nothing, Ohio State nothing. This is a hypodermic needle. I'm Art Linkletter, and you're going to see an amazing demonstration. Ever have a pen just stop writing? Well, the chances are you weren't out of ink. The ink had simply clogged. But now, Papermate has discovered an exclusive new ink formula with amazing flogen that prevents ink clogging. Watch. This pen with ordinary ink has stopped writing. Now we'll inject just a little of Papermate's flogen into the refill, the same flogen that's already in every new Papermate pen. And look, the ordinary pen writes again because Papermate's flogen ends ink clogging. And it writes every time on hard-to-write surfaces like checks, photos, even glass. Get a Papermate pen with amazing flogen. Now all Papermate pens and refills have amazing flogen. Harry Mundell, the squat left guard for the University of Oregon, he weighs 198, stands only 5'6". The co-captain for the University of Oregon was hurt. Shaken up a bit on the last play. The ball's on the 36-yard line, second and five for Ohio State. Joe Schaffel, number 64, is in at left guard for Oregon. Plays the middle guard spot. Russ Bowermaster's in that end and splits out to the right. But there is Bob White, the fullback again, going up to the 40. Bob White carried the ball against Iowa in seven out of eight plays on a sensational drive to bring the Buckeyes from behind to a victory over Iowa and a trip to the Rose Bowl and the conference championship. Ron Stover, Oregon's left end, up tripped the fullback. The ball's on the 39, a gain of three. It is third and two. No score first period. Third and two for Ohio State. Almost an eight-man line in there. Left halfback carrying the ball. Don Clark, who just went into the game, gets across the 40 to about the 41, close to a first down. Ron Stover, the first man to hit him, and Jerry Kirshner. And then the left linebacker, Bob Peterson. And Tony Stover is asked for an official timeout for a measurement to see whether or not the Buckeyes picked up the first down. You watch as we watch. First down, Ohio State. First and 10 for the Buckeyes. On their own 41, the sensational left halfback, Don Clark, who was injured early in the Purdue game, who was a potential All-America candidate but suffered as a result of the injuries, has come along fine and just went into the game at left half and picked up the first down for Ohio State. Frank Premblis, the quarterback, number 22. And it's given to Clark after a fake to the fullback on the ride series. Gets up to the line of scrimmage. Jim Linden, the right tackle, slowed him up. And Jerry Kirshner, the left tackle, and Joe Schaffold, the middle guard, made the finishing stop. The forward progress of the ball carry after being tackled carried him to the 43. So it's a gain of two, second and eight for Ohio State. 
11 minutes and 15 seconds remaining in the first period of the 44th Rose Bowl game. No score. A pitch to Clark, getting a block, and there he goes to midfield. He's to the 40 of Oregon. He's to the 30. Don Clark getting a beautiful block in there, finally stopped by Jim Linden. And Jack Morris, the key block was thrown by Dick Shafrath, the 208-pound left tackle, number 71, a junior, carrying the ball to the 30-yard line of Oregon, a 27-yard burst, a great back. First and 10 for Ohio State. Canavino following, getting a block from White and then being caught and chased. Now has to come the other way, getting another block beautifully. And still coming, getting away from two men, keeps his feet at the 40, gets to the 38. Stopped finally by Jerry Kirshner and Jim Linden. There were two beautiful blocks thrown in there, one by Bob White, the fullback, and the second block trying to spring him loose at the 45. Jack Morris was the first man that had him hemmed in. He plays uh, the right linebacker spot for Oregon. And the tackle finally was made by Jerry Kirsten and Jim Linden. The ball's on the 38-yard line, a loss of eight. Second and 18 for Ohio State, and Clark flanks out to the left. Now on a draw play, White has stopped. Jim Linden, the right tackle, spotted it, and Jerry Kirsch on the left tackle collaborated. The ball is between the 38 and 39-yard lines. Let's just call it the 38. It's right in between the two. It's third, actually an 18 and a half. No gain on the draw play. The ball on the Oregon 38 and a half yard line. Krimblis passing, and he's got... Jim Houston to 20 to the 10 and he is across the five and down at about the two yard line. Stopped by Charlie Turville to the right halfback. A beautiful pass pattern with Frank Kremblis rolling out and on a 36 yard pass play hitting his left end Jim Houston a sophomore six foot two 216 whose brother played at Ohio State and made All-America tackle a few years ago in Dell Houston. Ohio State moving down to the two-yard line. First down. No scores yet. And there is Kremblis trying to sneak. A favorite play by the Ohio State quarterback when he gets close to the goal line. Trying to follow the surge of the center of his line, but the middle of that Oregon line stopped him with Jim Linden, the right tackle. A 221-pound junior standing six foot four, spearheading the defense. And so it is second down and about a yard to go for Ohio State. The Buckeyes, who seldom pass but stick to the ground and grind it out, went to the air to put them in scoring position. Woody Hayes always said he had a passing attack when he needed one. And Kremblis again sneaking, and he is in there. Touchdown, Ohio State. Dick Shafrath leading him through, and Bill Jopko. Six-yard pass play set it up for the Buckeyes with the University of Oregon Webfoots displaying unusually good defensive strength until that pass set up the TD with Kremble sneaking over with Shafrath and Jobko leading him through. And now the try for the point, Canavino holding, and Kremble will try the point. It is good. Score. Ohio State, seven. Oregon, nothing. For the Buckeyes kickoff now to Oregon. Let's have a quick word from Chick Hearn. O'Malley took the Buckeyes from Columbus, Ohio, just 13 plays after taking the initial kickoff to go 79 yards. The big plays, of course, the 27-yard run by Clark, the 36-yard pass from Kremblis to Houston, 
And ironically, Mel, that is only the second, pa third pass this year that Houston has caught. His total uh, pass receiving yardage for the year coming into this game was only 67 yards. But that was a big one. Kremlis in for the touchdown. The PAT good, and with 7.57 left, it is 7-0 Ohio State. Mel Allen. Frank Kremlis will boot it with Jim Shanley and Jack Morris waiting for it, and Morris takes it on the six. He's a sprinter and goes up to the 20. Oregon likes to go up the sideline. He got across the 25 and down to about the 26 or 7-yard line by Frank Kremblis. Ohio State, by the way, Bob White also is in on the tackle, had two fullbacks in there, Galen Sisko and Bob White on defense. No huddle now for Oregon, first and 10 on the 27-yard line. Jack Crabtree, the quarterback, on a sneak. Against Stanford this year, Oregon ran an entire series of plays, some 12 for a touchdown, not going even into a huddle, and they're doing it again right now. As they have this pattern. It's second and eight on the 29 of Oregon, 7-0 Ohio State. Crabtree on an outside the belly series, giving it to the pullback, Jack Morris, but he got nowhere with the Buckeye defense coming to the fore, helped out by Bob White, who plays the right linebacker spot, and Dick Shafrath, the left tackle. Charlie Tourville this time, the left halfback flanks left, the right end, Ron Stover splits right, third and eight for Oregon. Crabtree's pass is completed beautifully to his right end at the 40. Ron Stover, the 197-pound junior, and it's a first down for Oregon. First and 10 on the Oregon 40-yard line. Galen Sisko, who is in the left linebacker spot, made the tackle. Jack Morris, the fullback, trying to get running room and fights his way to about the 45 and falls forward to about the 46 with Dick Shafrath making the tackle. Shafrath and Marshall, left and right tackles, reverse positions on defense. Shafrath, the right tackle, Marshall to left tackle. Second down and four for Oregon. Torval flanks left and Crabtree on a handoff to Jim Shanley, their finest running back on a quick hitter. Tackled by Jim Houston, sophomore left end who came along magnificently for Ohio State this year. The ball is spotted by Tony Scover on the 48-yard line. It is third and two. First time that Oregon has used the huddle. And Tourville, the left half, flanks out to the left, but the right end this time does not split. Secondary loosens up. Crabtree on the option keeps and dives across midfield to the Ohio State 49. Jim Houston... Again, moving in to make the tackle. It's a first down for Oregon. First and ten for the Webfoots at midfield. Crabtree is 17. Charlie Turbo, 25, the left halfback, flanks out to the near sideline. The right end, Baron Stover splits to the right. Against the 6-2-3 defense. A long count. And again, the quick hitter with Jim Shanley carrying... And uh, there was a marker on the play as the tackle was made with illegal, uh, back illegally in motion. Ohio State has its option. The tackle was made by Jim Houston, we're about to tell you. Ohio State declines the penalty as the ball was moved from midfield to the 48-yard line, thus... It costs Oregon a down, and it is second and eight for Oregon on the Ohio State 48. Four straight tackles made by Jim Houston. Once again, Charlie Turville, number 25, flanks out to the near sideline. The right end's in tight. Morris and Shanley in behind Crabtree. Seven to nothing, Ohio State, first period. And the right halfback, Shanley, on a slant trying the right side of the Ohio State line, gets to about the 46-yard line with Dick Shafrath making the tackle. Number 71, you saw him get up off the ground. J.C. Wheeler, the left end for Oregon, number 80, led the offensive blocking. It's third and five. Just about two yards to the game. They're going to take a run at it. That's a fourth down, make the third down coming up. There's Crabtree fading back. Cops his arm, throws a pass down. Fields intercepted on the Ohio State 30 by Joe Carabino, and he stopped immediately. State 30 on the interception. State over the University of Oregon. No 
pass, and the tight team in the backfield will be in split wide by one yard. As crumbles up tight on the long count, calling his signals, takes the ball and turns around on the stutter play, hands it off to his fullback, Bob White, through the left side goes Bob. Off the left guard between left guard and long count. Crumbles up tight under center with the tight team in the backfield. Turns, pitches back to Clark, who gets down to a blocking. Swings on the right side to break the way on, up to the 40. Hits the 40 yard line right now. Of tackle the fullback on the handoff right rips through the left side of the line from the 41 yard line up to about the 40 left end wide about five yards a man in motion in the backfield it is right taking the ball on the handoff driving over the 50 up to about the 47 yard line. seven yard line white flanker coming up to the right is power master but he's way outside the right end and on the take pitch out and hand over to right the fullback he's through the left side of the line again trying to break into the door but he moves down to about the 46 yard line yeah. well, Ohio State up to the line of scrimmage on their second down coming up at about eight yards to go they keep a tight seat in the backfield the ball is taken to take the pitch back and a kick by Kremper as he plays off the left rolls out towards the pass down on the far side of the 35-yard line to Houston well, Ohio State operating there's the pitch back it's Clark trying to turn the right side, get some downfield blocking. The track sends a man, men off to the right fake, picking out, and keeps himself paid back with the under on the 35. So he's 15 yards outside of left end. Ohio State on the Oregon 34. Crumbles at quarter, calling his signals, takes the ball, fades back, cocks his arm, puts his field over, there's a long one downfield. It's to the foe on the 10 yard line over his fingers, it's incomplete. Comes Southern. kick going into the Oregon end zone. Into the Oregon end zone with about two uh, seconds up to play in the first period of the ball game. So that means a touchback in Oregon field. They take the ball and it's handed off on the cross box to Willie West. Willie West coming through the right side of the line, moves over up to about his own 24 yard line. And that does it. That does it for the There is a fake center play and a pitch out to the right halfback. A three going down the left side line. Over to the 40, moving up to the 45-yard line. He was in there, calling the signals now for Oregon. He takes the ball, slides along on the quarterback option, turns, pitches back. Again, it is their halfback. It's time at Shenley. Oh, it's not back now on long count. It's grabbed three up time in the center, takes the ball, fades back. Puts his field over, cocks his arm, throws a sharp pass downfield to the 45-yard line of high state territory. He's 15 yards outside of right end. The ball is taken. There is a big jump pass as the quarterback in four feet. Got the up a little. Moves to the Ohio State 45 down to the 43 yard line. As John Clark finally comes in to make the stop. Very fine. They send a flanker off wide to the right again. Send their left end wide. The ball is taken and kept. Then pitched out to the halfback Stanley, who's around the left side. Turns the corner on the far side of the field. Boost. Sends a flanker out wide to the right. Ball is snapped, given to the quarterback, quarterback over to Morris, and to the line, over to 20, and it's been up to a first down, down about 20. Halfback, out wide to the right. Takes the ball, face back, cocks his arm, throws the pass, that's the third down on the 10 yard line. Plays off the right, quarterback option play, he keeps it himself, moves to the five, and he cuts his arm. Wide right of the line of scrimmage, Crabtree takes the ball, quarterback option, pitches back to Stanley, he's around the left side, to the goal line, he's over. Snapped back now by center down Peterson. The kick, it is good. It's high. Good on Mr. Stover's whistle. The ball is booted high. It's an over end kick down to Clark on the three yard line. He takes it on the three, comes up the sideline on the left side of the field. Picks up some downfield blocking. He's to the 20. Gets away from two men. He's moved to the 25 on the far sideline and jumps on his own about 27 yard line. By Center to call, takes the ball on the right, sir. Hands off to his fullback. It's right, driving through the right side of the line. Moves over the 30 up and fights his way to the 35 yard line. In the 35, Ohio State again putting its operation to the right team. A fumble, let's see who's recovered down there on the 35 yard line. A fumble on the handoff. Center takes the ball and on the right, sir. Hands to Clark through the right side of the line. Goes Clark off his own right tackle, goes to the 39. Hit and hit hard and drops. On the 39 yard line. Taken and they take pitch out and the fullback is given it on the semi drop play. It's right through the comes off in motion. There's a oh, pitch out. The ball kept by the left as he through the right side of the line. Takes in the circle down the Oregon 20. Hit at the 20 yard line on the far side lines and knocks down from behind. 
ball is given to Clark on the handbar. As he crosses over, tries his own right tackle. Brad moves to the line of scrimmage and gets just uh, signals under center. Takes a pitch by, keeps himself, turns to the right, tries to sneak through the right side of the line, picks up about two yards, and then he's knocked down on the far sideline. University of Pine Rose Bowl, exhibition of collegiate football here this afternoon. Safety in the backfield, a big pitch out, rolling off to the left, stumbles, off his arm, throws the ball. That's Stover. The ball is given and on the start of place. Morris to pull back up the middle with a 15 yard line hit at the 15 and drop on the 16 yard line. But Bill jumps up the sideline again on the far side of the field. The ball is given to the fullback on the start of place. Morris pulling his way over the 20 to about the 21. Right in the backfield all the way this time. And on the handball play, it is pulled back. Morris to the middle of the line of 25. It is 25 by Jim Marshall. Leo Brown in the quarterback option, that brief, he crosses the left, takes the pitch back, and out, moves to his own 31, and knocked out of bounds by Dan Fonk. As they send the flanker out to the left, and on the big pitch out, it is the halfback, Shanley, trying to cross over, taking the handoff from his quarterback, moves over to about 32. On the draw play, it's fullback Norris handling, moving up to the line of scrimmage, his left flag goes down on the field, and pulls his way to his own 37. Tight in the backfield. Crabtree turns and pitches back to Willie West, who tries to throw a pass, and it is knocked down and then grabbed in the air by Keeley, who holds onto the ball and moves up to the 30. There is a fake draw play, and it's quarterback Crabtree keeping and being knocked down behind the line of scrimmage. The red flag goes down on the field. And Trump, out of the huddle, comes to the line of scrimmage. It pitches back to West, who rolls right around to the right post, pass down to the field. in the Ohio State 45. Drop play in the course up the middle for the Ohio State 30. That's for Riddy Kellogg. 31. The ball is taken and on the draw play. It's Morris trying the center of the line and he gets no signals out, takes the ball, fumbles it as he attempts to pitch on. There's a free ball down there. Ohio State recovers it on their own 38 yard line as Dan Cronk. Ohio State takes the ball and on the stutter play and drops his full back right up the middle of the 50-yard line. Goes over into the Oregon Territory to the... On the... From the team. And it's Clark carrying the ball around the right side. Turns the corner, moves down to about the 15 yard line. There's a fake handoff, and keeping his cut with the two cross to the left, and cuts back over his own left tackle. There is a fake... Uh, Sort of play handoff and it's Trump keeping the ball being bottled up for the moment. Back on the 30 yard line, still running, it's Trump to the sideline. And he down by the man as Trump is faced back and throws a pass to White, or intended to have on the 20. But the big fellow is able to get his hands on it. He was in the clear and couldn't hold. Well, face back is being caught, knocked down. Back on the Oregon 44. Number 74 was in there. That's Hot Fucker. And the quarterback option play is being exercised now. The pitch out to Shanley. He's around the left side of the line. Moves to the 50. Hit it to 50. Goes to the 49. Ohio State Territory. As things are moving to the left to right to the sideline. The pitch back, however, comes to fullback Morris. He shoots his way up the middle to the 40. And strikes at two men and goes to the 38. Jack Morris on the pitch on the cutback play. Moves to the 14. First down for Oregon. On the Ohio State 38 yard line. And that's Spark that clean feeling, that well-groomed look. And you're on the beam in no time with Gillette Foamy, the Jet Speed Instant Lather. Rich, cloud-clean lather instantly that sets your whiskers up fine for your Gillette Super Speed Razor. Only Gillette Foamy contains K34, the cleansing antiseptic that destroys harmful bacteria while you shave. If you want that clean feeling fast, that satisfied feeling of knowing you look your best, try Gillette Foamy. Well, seems like everybody wants Gillette Foamy. Just 79 cents. Gillette also makes excellent shaving creams for you brushless and lather fans. All three types, brushless, lather, and instant lather, are on sale at a store near you. And so the first half is at an end. Ohio State 7, Oregon 7, mid-time excitement and pageantry, and here is Chick Hearn. Well, thank you, Mel Allen. 
What a first half, ladies and gentlemen, and as the 100,000 fans here at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena look down on the floor of this great stadium now, they look upon the marching band of the University of Oregon. Let's listen. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for a memorable type of entertainment, ringing with the nostalgia of the past, it's the showboat and waiting for the Robert E. Lee. This is a 100, or make it an 80 membership band for the University of Oregon, all men. The baton twirlers are Doreen Morash and Mary Jane Waite, the arranger John Henriksen, the drum major is Jim Walls, and the administrative assistant is Rex Sutherland, the director of the Oregon band, Ira D. Lee. At Pasadena, California, on a beautiful New Year's Day, the score, Ohio State 7 and Oregon 7. you're looking in today, ladies and gentlemen, that like the 100,000 fans here at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, you're enjoying our halftime. The University of Oregon marching band. Seven to seven at halftime. It was halfway through the first period. Ohio State drawing first blood. They went 79 yards in 13 plays. A 27-yard run by Clark. A 36-yard pass. Trembles to Houston moved the ball to the two-yard line. Where on second down, Trembles got in for the touchdown. Trembles' point after was good. And Ohio State led with 7.57 left to play in the first quarter by a score of 7-0. Then in the second period, Oregon got rolling. They went 80 yards in 10 plays with Shanley scoring from the five. Morris's point after tied it up at 7-7, seven to seven, and in that series of plays, it was Jack Crabtree, the quarterback, mixing up his plays very brilliantly. From that point forward, in the last 12 minutes of the first half, it was give and take, with both clubs threatening and both clubs being unable to penetrate deep enough into the other territory for a score. So at halftime, we're deadlocked at 7-7. Seven to seven. We'll have some official halftime statistics for you a little bit later on during our halftime show. Let's go down now for the famous Me and My Shadow. State University marching band is. May I tell you that they are deployed down here to our left along the northern goal line and they will be out here to entertain as is the University of Oregon band and of course the Ohio State band will be on next. The band forms the numerals 1859, 1859, paying tribute to the brave pioneers who made possible the great state of Oregon. Those brave men, women, and children who followed the famed Oregon Trail.
1959, the year in which Oregon observes its 100th anniversary as a state. And in observance of this anniversary, plans are now underway for the Oregon Centennial Exposition and International Trade Fair. This will be the major American exposition in 1959. And to each of you, we extend a cordial invitation to come to the fair. Jane Waite. Ladies and gentlemen, the University of Oregon marching band under director Ira D. Lee. Ladies and gentlemen, the drive is on to stamp out paralytic polio in the United States and Canada. This dread disease can be virtually eliminated if everyone under 40 is properly inoculated with the Salk vaccine. It has been found that three shots of the Salk vaccine, properly spaced, are necessary for maximum protection. But even one or two shots is helpful. It is particularly important for preschool age children, expectant mothers and parents of young children to have these inoculations. So if you and all members of your family under 40 have not received your three salt vaccine inoculations, you are urged to do so immediately. Please get in touch with your family physician or local health department now. Don't give polio a chance. We pause now for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Is this the face of a deceiver? Keenan Wynn stars on Wagon Train tonight. <laughs> Weather's bread is sure topped with me. A hit for flavor. So soft and tender and energy rich, too. Yep, you can't miss with Weather's bread. Ha, 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 Flavor Buds of real coffee. What a wonderful difference that Flavor Bud flavor makes. Instant Maxwell House. KRCA Los Angeles. Ladies and gentlemen, a hundred strong, the marching band of Ohio State University under director Jack Evans. <laughs> symbolizes the inauguration last spring of Ohio State University President Novice G. Fawcett.
girls who have become famous in show business, the Ohio State University Marching Band. Honors from Circleville, Ohio, Ted Lewis in his famous Me and My Shadow. Is everybody happy? Well, I don't know. The score is tied. No one can be too glum. It's Ohio State 7, Oregon 7 at halftime. This is Chick Hearn with Mel Allen from the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California. And the Gillette Safety Razor Company wishes all of you a happy new year. Percussion section, the terrific serenade to a sand dune from a Latin American fiesta, sensational. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, one of the most unique and cleverest of all halftime entertainments. Hear those bells, ring them bells, jingle bells, and for all Lang Zang. the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. It's Ohio State 7, Oregon 7. There are also bells sounds which are very... And now the diamond Ohio monogram, the sound of the campus chimes. coming back onto the field.
coming back onto the field are the officials. I believe that Mel gave you the names of the men working the ball game, and both he and I are great admirers of these men in the striped shirt. I'd like to tell you that the man along the far sideline that you have seen once in a while in your picture handling the downs marker is Bill Settle of San Gabriel, California, and on the chain gang is John T. McDonough of Santa Ana, California, and Don Lindeberg from Anaheim, California. The halftime ceremony here at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California, just about to come to a close as we look in on the final number of the Ohio State University Marching Band and a brilliant union they are under director Jack Evans. And now let's go back to Mel Allen. The Ohio State Band, the Webb Foots are coming back onto the field. They're there. Here come the Buckeyes. The field is being cleared. In a moment or two, we'll be seeing the kickoff of the second half of this historic gridiron battle. The score, Ohio State 7, Oregon 7. Feel sharp, be sharp. Now there's a razor. The let super speed with the blade in it and the weight you need. Light, regular, heavy. Only way to get a decent shave. Yeah, man, for quick, easy shaves at last, they're the end. Just team up with the Gillette Super Speed Razor that matches your skin and beard exactly. There's the light with correct blade edge exposure angle and weight for light beards, regular for average beard, heavy for hard to shave beards. Change blades so. Choose your Gillette Super Speed Razor, Gillette Blue Blade Dispenser, and sturdy travel case, $1. Getting ready for the second half at the Rose Bowl in sunny Pasadena. The score, Ohio State 7, Oregon 7. The amazing Webfoots from Eugene, Oregon, who were an underdog in this game, fought Ohio State to a standstill. The Buckeyes, one of the truly great teams in the nation, voted by many as the number one team in the country probably have uh, received uh, some adjustments from Woody Hayes in the dressing room at halftime. Woody Hayes was voted the coach of the year. Len Casanova, the coach of the Webfoots, always known for coming up with a surprise and concocting uh, some confounding defenses, has done a tremendous job with his Webfoots. In fact, the coaching staffs of both teams, Casanova's Coaches Jack Roach, Johnny McKay, Bill Hammer, Jerry Fry, Phil McHugh, and Rainus Cochran have done a great job. And Woody Hayes' staff of Lyle Clark, Ernie Godfrey, Harry Strobel, Esco Sarkin, and Gene Feckety, Bill Hess, and Clay Brush. Ohio State in its huddle will kick off to Oregon. Frank Kremblis will boot it. It'll be Houston, Canabino, Cisco, Jobco, Shafrath. Kremblis, Marshall, Thomas White, and Brown along the line in the deep receiving positions. Number 30, Jim Shanley. Number 40, Jack Morris. Morris to the near side. Joe Schaffel is in there along with Kirshner. Uh, Peterson, Grotka, and Linden. We are double-checking to see whether no, Mundell is still out. Wheeler and Stover. And 15 yards outside. Crabtree takes the ball, fades back. He's being bottled. Runs off to the right on the 10-yard line. Throws a pass downfield. Completed on the 30-yard line. It is Clover, the short foot, and sure as good to another pass from the Clover who nails it on the 43. But both clubs, the handoff to the fullback. It's Jack Morris trying to center the line. Crabtree takes the ball, fades off to the right, rolls out, fakes throwing a fast keep, and finally does throw the ball, and it is intercepted by right halfback Joe Camino on the 48 yard line. It was intended for Clover who finally had to make the tackle. Danny Fraser in a quarter now for Oregon defensively. White on the give off. Bucks his way up to the 45 yard line. So now with the tight team in the backfield, the ball was taken by Kremblis, spins and gives off to Clark, who touches to the left side of the line on a quick opening play and down to the 40 yard line. He gets number 71 in there to make the stop. Yard right on the split, the ball is given to White, plays into the middle of the line, and I believe he may have made it. Takes the ball 
down on the draw, hands it to Morris, yeah. and he's into the left side of the line, stopped by Chick Shafrat. Torville, as Crabtree fading back, and throws the pass, that is knocked down. With the blows, one of the Oregon Bucks gets a flanker on the tee. Crabtree takes the ball, fades back, makes no bones about it, he crosses his arm, throws a long pass down, he has completed. The 25 is Torville down on the... The ball is snapped. He fades off to the right corner back off, and he keeps the move to the 40. He's in at the 40 and dropped on the far side line by Canavino. The ball is taken, faked on the handoff. Crabtree fades. He's cut by the line of pretty early 49. Up down back there by White. He takes the ball, fakes the handoff, fades back, cocks his arm, looks, then throws downfield. The, the, the line of scrimmage. The ball is taken by Crabtree. A pitch out for Morris. He's around the right side. Flanker to the left is Torville. Oregon's ball on the Ohio State 20. 7-7 seven seven the score. Crabtree on the long count. Takes the ball. Quarterback option he keeps. He drives off the right tackle. Moves up the two and is dropped hard. But Crabtree taking the ball. Fades. Looks his field over. Throws to the flat on the side. It is Torville. Side. Crabtree takes the ball. Rolls back. Throws one downfield. It's almost the place of that strike. Ready for the ball to be snapped back. It'll be an angle from the 24-yard line. There is the boot. It is no good. The first play as he comes up tight on the center, takes the ball, takes the pitch up, and then hands off to White. who is stopped after picking up two at left guard. He moves to the 22. Eight yards to go. Columbus takes the ball and pitches back to Clark. The halfback, he's farther out the left side of the body hit. By three and out, and finally drives his way to the there's a big pitch out and a hand over to White, fullback. Bob is into the center of the line, moves up to the 34 yards on the far side. There's a big pitch out again, it's White again on the roll, into the center he goes, the fullback goes to the 40. Hit it to 40 and drops the center play in effect, the ball given over to the fullback White, who is trying to pull his way through the goes to motion, the big pitch out to him, and White again. This time over the 50, he goes driving off right, takes the ball. Breaks off and again gets the leg. There he goes again. Right to the middle of the line. Driving down to the 30. Right in the backfield again. And it's a give off to Clark who sneaks off the right side and cuts back over and drives him off left guard. As they face the time to the fullback, it's cheap by quarterback Trembles and he's slowed under. Back to the and Trembles hands off again to the right who pulls his way through the center. And when he hits that line, it's just like opening the floodgates. Everybody be in the backfield. The ball is taken by Krampus, pitch back to Clark, he swings to the right side, hugs the sideline, hit at the 21-yard line, knocked out of bounds on the 21-yard line. See, that's the end. Then, White be in the backfield. The ball is taken, take pitch out, White is the receiver, he takes the ball and up through the left side of the line, gets up to about the 18-yard line. The man in the motion to the right gives to White, who stumbles his way into the line as he tries to hit the ball. He might have picked up a half a yard, and it was about it. He tried to the ball is snapped, Clay steals the boot. It is... Boot. Ohio State, by Southern field goal, leads it. That's true. Southern kicks off, it's deep, and goes over the goal line. on the long top, takes the ball, fires over the line of scrimmage to his own 30-yard line, completed to Kimbrough for Crabtree operating very well behind that line, takes a pitch over to the left and turns and tries to um, draw a pass, but he's slowed under and may have dropped the ball. However, I believe the game will get his replacement for you in a moment. Oregon takes the ball, there's a pitch back to Willie West. He runs wide around the right side, throws the pass down field. It's completed on his own 40 to his right end Silver. Silver down in the Hudson sideline to the far side. The quarterback option played by Crabtree. The ball is given to Morris. He has nowhere to go as he comes to the sideline. See, operating against the six-man line. Crabtree fading back. Throws a pass to Kohler. Down to the R State 45. He's hitting off Calabans as he grabs Michael Canavino. Again. 
Three up down under center, ready to call these signals out. Takes the ball, he himself cuts into the line, and he'll make the first down. That's for sure. Down to the 50. The phone. Grab three on the long count behind the balance line. Grabs the ball and pitches out to Morris, who swings wide, and then is trapped. The defensive right end turned him in. That was uh, Leo Brown. Into the arms of Bertho Arnold, the right tackle. And the ball's on the 47-yard line. A loss of three. Second and 13 for Oregon. A fine defensive play by Leo Brown. Again, that open setup. With Kimbrough, the left end, split out. And the quick pass is completed to Stover, and he's to the 30, and to the 25, and fumbles, and Ohio State recovers. Joe Canavino recovered Ron Stover's fumble as the web foot sensationally struck through the air once again to Ron Stover, who was on the drive. But he was hit hard, and the ball shaken loose. And the Buckeyes recover on their own 24-yard line with 10 minutes and 50 seconds to go in the ballgame. A great offensive play and a great defensive play combined in one. A tough break for the Webfoots, a great break for the Buckeyes, who lead 10 to 7. Don Ladenschlager in now for Oregon at right half in place of Shanley. Boy, that Stover is great. Ohio State's ball first in town in zone 24. Leo Brown split out to the near sideline. And Kremblis gives to his fullback, Galen Sisko, fighting his way for yardage to the 30. Galen Sisko in at fullback, number 36, in place of Bob White. Don Clark is in at left half, number 18. And Joe Canavino, 16 at right half. Frank Kremblis, 22 at quarter. Jerry Kirshner and Don Laudenschlager made the tackle. Ball's on the 30, a gain of six, second and four for the Buckeyes. 10 minutes and 15 seconds left in the game. Leo Brown splits way out to the right. And on the slant, Don Clark, the left halfback, is bottled up after he uh, went a couple of yards with Bob Peterson, the left linebacker, and Jim Linden, the right tackle, making the stop. The ball's on the 32. It is third and two for Ohio State. And a great Rose Bowl game. A tremendous struggle between the Webb puts of Oregon and the Buckeyes of Ohio State. Nine minutes and 45 seconds left in the game. Ohio State leading 10 to 7. Leo Brown splits way out to the right. Kremblis on a keep. Got plenty of daylight and goes to the 40 as tackled. The referee goes down as well. And Kremblis, after being tackled, falls forward to about the 41 or 2. With Willie West, the defensive right halfback, making the tackle. The ball is spotted on about the 41. It is a first down for Ohio State. Frank Kremblis rolling out to his right. Most of the time this year, he has rolled out to his left. And that's what Oregon has been looking for, and Kremblis fooled him on that play. Against a 4-5 defense, fullback Galen Sisko Banging his way up the middle across the 45 to about the 46 yard line. Alden Kimbrough, the right end, and Greg Altenhoff in the left end, both, uh, rather, Ron Stover, the left end, came in to stop him. Ball's on the 45, second and six for Ohio State. With eight minutes and a half remaining in the game, and the Buckeyes in possession, leading 10 to 7. Again, the fullback, Galen Sisko, spinning and driving across midfield into Oregon territory to the 48-yard line with Joe Schaffel, the middle guard, stopping him, and it's a first down for Ohio State on the Oregon 48-yard line. Dan Franken, and Bill Jobko opening that hole for him. First and 10 for the Buckeyes on the Oregon 48. Seven minutes and 55 seconds left in the game. And Ohio State asks for a timeout. Now there's a timeout for Ohio State. The score, the Ohio State Buckeyes 10, Oregon 7. A 
I dedicate this fool to you. My love you have you fool. Until you get us this sunshade, I'd rather keep the bull. Look sharp. Heel sharp. Be sharp. Now there's a race on. Kill it super speed with the blade edge and the weight you need. Light, regular, heavy, Olay. Only way to get a decent shade. Olay, senors, it's a wise hombre who gets a Gillette Super Speed razor matched to his skin and beard. Light for lighter beards, regular for average skin and beard, heavy for dense, hard-to-shave beards. One has the right blade edge exposure angle and weight for the most comfortable shaves you ever had. Change blades, rinse clean, so. Get your Gillette Super Speed razor, one dollar, complete with Gillette Blue Blade dispenser and travel case. The Ohio State Band just finishing up. J.C. Wheeler in at left end for Oregon in place of Alden Kimbrough. Darrell Ashbacker at left tackle in place of Jerry Kirshner. Bob Hurd in at left guard. Dave Fish is in at center now for Oregon. Rep. Gratkow, Linden, and Stover completing the line. Brad Tree West, Morris, and Laudenschlager in the secondary. Ohio State's ball first and 10 on the Oregon 48. 10 to 7. Favor the Buckeyes. 7 minutes and 50 seconds to go in the game. Fullback Galen Sisko driving up the middle. The Buckeyes have used their fullbacks, both Bob White and Galen Sisko, to dent the middle of the Oregon line. Dave Fish was the first man to hit the ball carrier, helped out by others. The ball's advanced to the 43 yard line, a gain of five, second and five for Ohio State. Sticking now to its split T attack, in which they just churn up the ground and eat up the yardage. Again, Galen Sisko, the senior fullback. A 203-pounder going through the hole opened up by Dan Pronk and Aurelius Thomas. And the ball is moved to the 39-yard line of Oregon, stopped by Dave Fish and Darrell Ashbacker. Also, Bob Hurd in on the tackle. Galen Sisko from St. Mary's, Ohio, moves the ball to the 39-yard line. Third and one for Ohio State. The Buckeyes leading 10 to 7 with six minutes and 55 seconds left in the game. Once again, Galen Sisko, the fullback, banging up the middle as the Buckeyes seek to pick up the first down, succeed in doing so as they move the ball to the 37-yard line, approximately, of the Oregon Webfoots. Bob Hurd playing a fine game at guard. The middle guard made the tackle to help Bob Gratkow, the middle linebacker, and Dave Fish, the left linebacker. Darrell Ashbacker in on the play. The ball's on the 38-yard line. First and 10 for Ohio State on the Oregon 38. Leo Brown splits out to the right. He's the right end. Joe Canavino, or rather Galen Sisko, after a fake pitch out to Canavino, carried the ball and moved it to about the 35-yard line. Bob Hurd made the stop and runs over the left end. The ball is spotted down. The knee touched the ground at the 37-yard line. Almost the 36, let's call it the 36, makes it second and eight for Ohio State. Will Reeve replaces Bob Gratkow at right guard. Gratkow's played tremendously for Oregon. Tom Keel in right tackle for Jim Linden, the junior right tackle play, has played tremendously for the Webfoots. In fact, all these kids have just done themselves proud today in this 44th Rose Bowl. Greg Altenhoffen in at right end for Oregon at second and eight. Don Clark is piled up at about the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Dave Fish and Darrell Ashbacher making the stop along with Will Reeves. It is third and eight, no gain on the play. Five minutes and 47 seconds left in the game. Ohio State leading 10 to seven. Leo Brown comes out as a left end. That means they're in an unbalanced line strong to the left against uh, about a 6-1 defense and we hear a whistle and uh, let's watch and see what happened as Kremblis carrying the ball the Buckeyes are guilty of uh, delay of the game taking too much time to get the playoff suffer a five yard penalty 
The down remains the same. It's third and 13. On the 41-yard line of the Webfoots, Jim Shanley's in for Don Laudenschlager at right half now for Oregon. Five minutes and 15 seconds remaining in the game. Ohio State leading 10 to 7. Third and 13. Frank Kremblis keeping. And he is piled up at the line of scrimmage. And so the Buckeyes will have to uh, get rid of that ball by punt formation. Greg Altenhofer and Darrell Ashbacher stopping Frank Kremblis as he sought to sneak for the yardage. And now in punt formation is Frank Kremblis. This is the second time Ohio State has uh, had to punt today. West and Shanley in the double safety for Oregon. And the kick is angled for the sideline and goes out of bounds. We'll find the spot that they mark it at approximately the 17-yard line of Oregon. Beautiful kick. And now going in is Bob White for Ohio State. With four minutes and 29 seconds remaining in the game, Ohio State leading 10 to 7. Bob White replaces Dan Frank. Bob White playing the right linebacker spot. And the other fullback, Galen Sisko, the left linebacker spot. The first unit back in for Oregon, Jack Crabtree at quarter, Charlie Torval at left half, Jack Morris at full, Jim Shanley at right half, and along the line, Wheeler, Ashbacker, Shaffold, Peterson, Brett, Kyle, Linden, and Altenhoff. Let's put Kirshner in at left tackle. And keep Alden Kimbrough in that left end in place of J.C. Wheeler. And so with four minutes and 29 seconds remaining in the game with Ohio State leading 10 to 7. Oregon has the ball first and 10 on its 17. Ron Stover's in at right end. And on a reverse, Turbo's trying to find running room, and he runs hard to the 25, to the 26-yard line. Crabtree gave to Shanley, who handed it to Turbo on a reverse off T formation with Bill Jobko, the middle linebacker, making the stop for the Buckeyes. A nine-yard pickup, making it second and one for Oregon as time begins to run out. Four minutes left. Turbo. The left halfback flanks left and Ron Stover, the right end, spits to the near sideline. The secondary is loose. Jack Morris, the fullback on the handoff, fighting his way, trying for the first down, picks it up, and it is first and ten for Oregon. On the Oregon 28-yard line, Joe Schaffel and Bob Gutkow leading the way, opening up the hole. It was Jim Marshall and Aurelius Thomas who made the tackle. First and 10 for Oregon on their own, 28. Charlie Turrible, the left halfback, flanks out to the left. Secondary is loose. Crabtree on the option, decides to keep and goes to the 35 before he is jarred and driven back. He got just a little bit short of the 35. Charlie Turrible throwing a uh, fine block in there as he led the play. Frank Kremlis made the tackle. The ball's on the 34, and three minutes remain in the game. It is second down and four. For Oregon, 10 to 7, Ohio State. Now two minutes and 50 seconds. And again on that reverse, Turbo's going to throw. He does, and it is completed at midfield to Ron Silver. Joe Canavino made the tackle. Ron Stover, who has been simply spectacular today in past receptions, catches his ninth pass of the game for a total of 119 yards, moving the ball to the 49-yard line of Oregon. The clock is stopped with two minutes and 29 seconds to go in the game. Ohio State leading 10 to 7. And this crowd of 100,000 leaps to its collective feet on that beautiful pass reception. And the Oregon rooting section across the way hollering, go, 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 and Jack Crabtree signaling to him to be quiet so they can hear the signals. And Leroy Phelps is now in at left halfback, number 22. And Crabtree is trying to quieten the crowd. And that's Phelps flanked to the left and Stover split to the right as Crabtree tries to find somebody. And he throws, but it is incomplete. And an interference call at the 47-yard line. 
Alden Kimbrough, the intended receiver. Leo Brown defending against it is called for pass interference. And Oregon is in possession on the Buckeye 47 with two minutes and 24 seconds left in the game and with Ohio State leading 10 to 7 in one of the most exciting Rose Bowl games in many a moon. And with time running out, Oregon quickly moving. And Stover splits to the right. And the secondary for Ohio State is mighty loose as they look for that pass. And here's a screen pass, and it is grabbed at midfield by Shanley. But he can't get uh, very far. And there's a marker thrown, a clip, I believe, against Oregon on Ron Stover, who tried to clear out Joe Canavino at the 48-yard line. Stover is getting up slowly. A clipping penalty. As Ron Stover sought to block out Joe Canavino. A marker was thrown and a clipping penalty call. Though the progress of the ball only uh, went up to about the 48. Clipping penalty. Moves Oregon back 15 yards. The clock shows two minutes and 13 seconds left in the game. John Wilner is in at left tackle for Oregon in place of Jerry Kirshner. And the ball is now on the 33-yard line between the 33 and 34-yard lines of Oregon. First down and 29 to go for the first down. 67 for the clincher. But the Buckeyes, who have fought valiantly today, are leading 10 to 7 and are seeking to hold the ground. At this point, Oregon asks for a timeout. Now there's a timeout for the University of Oregon. The score, Ohio State 10, Oregon 7. Look sharp, feel sharp. Be sharp and listen, mister. How are you fixed for a blade? Do you have blade? How are you fixed for a blade? You better check. Please make sure you have enough. Cause a worn out blade makes shaving mighty tough. How are you fixed for a blade? Better look. Gillette Blue Blade IB. Oregon this afternoon has completed 15 out of 21 passes. The Rose Bowl record, Navy against Washington in 1924, completed 16. Chick, while his time is still out, this has been one of the most sensationally and spectacularly and hard-fought Rose Bowl games that I've ever seen. I imagine that millions of football fans, Mel, throughout America and everywhere that this um, telecast and the radio broadcast by Gillette is going are completely startled at the great football play today of Len Casanova's underdog Oregon Ducks. They have battled these Ohio State Buckeyes right down to the wire. In fact, the University of Oregon leads in first downs 21-19, to 19, but they trail on the scoreboard to this powerful Ohio State 11, 10 to 7. And as Mel said, one more completed pass now by Oregon will tie a 34-year-old Rose Bowl record. Crabtree has completed 12 out of 18 today. West is 3 for 3 for Oregon, so they've got 15 out of 21. So that's something else to add to the excitement in the final 2-13. Mel Allen. I want to take just this moment to thank Marv Holman of Ohio State, Assistant Athletic Publicity Director for spotting Ohio State, and our ever-present observer, Larry Allen, who has been spotting Oregon. Chuck Osborne in at fullback for Oregon, first and 29. Crabtree's past the Stover again, and he's trying to go, and he gets past midfield to the Buckeye, 48. And that is the 16th completion, and Oregon ties the Rose Bowl record for most completions. Frank Kremblis made the tackle, and Stover has just been great. It is second down coming up, and 11, a minute and 48 seconds left, 10 to 7, Ohio State. And Crabtree is going to run. He gets to about the 42. The Buckeye secondary all went back. Dick Shaprath made the tackle. Joe Schaffeld led the offensive block in there. It is third down coming up. With five to go for a first down, a minute and 20 seconds to go. 10 to 7, Ohio State. And the Webfoots are trying valiantly against the Buckeyes. And a great play by Aurelius Thomas, or rather Jim Houston, the left hand number 84. 
drops Crabtree at midfield. And down the far sideline was Alden Kimbrough all alone. And there are 58 seconds left in the game, and 57, and the seconds tick off. The ball is on the Ohio State 49-yard line. The Buckeyes leading 10 to 7. It is fourth down and 12. And this is probably it for Oregon. Let's watch. Everybody is standing up now. And Crabtree throws, and it is incomplete at the 35. Runs over the intended receiver. It was almost intercepted by Joe Canavino. The clock is stopped with 39 seconds left. A great try by the West.